What is going on, garden fans? Welcome back to the Permaculture Homestead. I am out at the project site right now. I want to give you a quick walk about the whole food forest because I am honestly not sure when I'm going to get another chance to be out here. Sounds like they're going to be shutting my town down for the next 14 days here pretty soon. And while it's super crazy out in the real world, it is actually very quiet, calm, and peaceful here at the project site. Nature is still doing its thing. Uh, plants are flowering. Bees are out here pollinating. Uh, life goes on no matter what. Uh, at the bottom of the hill, we've got a great polyculturing of pawpaws, which are starting to flower out, and iliagnus. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six iliagnus shrubs. All of them are in full bloom, looking really good. Uh, there's lots of life out here, lots of bees pollinating. The flowers look great. They're starting to change color. The leaves are coming on. So it really looks nice out here with these frosty uh, nitrogen-fixing plants doing their thing in the landscape. Now all the pawpaws down here have broken dormancy. They're starting to put on leaves. There's a few pawpaws I have brought from my own home, some runners that are about to break dormancy. They're looking pretty good. So that's the bottom of the hill. And I'm gonna back up here and kind of get you a, just a wide angle view of what's going on here. So we're at the bottom of the hill, we got this swale mound here, and on the swale mound, we have figs that are all also breaking dormancy. And there's a fig every five or six feet on this swale mound. A bunch of different varieties, LSU gold, many different varieties of figs out here. Black mission figs. So there's just a huge variety of figs on the swale mounds. The swale itself is the footpath for people to walk up and down and gather food. Now on this swale paddy, this first swale paddy on the hill, we have a polyculturing of swamp mayhaws. We have one, two, three, four mayhaws growing with an understory of blackberry and blueberry. So there are some thornless variety blackberries that we've been tip layering down the way here. And they meet up with a hedge of blueberries that are flowering and leafing out, breaking dormancy. So there will be fruit out here this year. There will be a lot of it. The dominant ground cover is clover and chickweed. And this is our nitrogen fixing, biomass accumulating, living mulch ground cover. And that's the dominant ground cover right now. So in another month or so, you're gonna see a lot of red uh, mammoth clover spikes out here to bring in more pollinators. Once again, we have swamp mayhaws and blueberries here on this swale paddy. So I'm gonna move on up to the next swale and swale paddy up. Swale paddy, swale mound I just stepped over and we're starting to get a little more diversity. So we have a jujube right here we have a persimmon right here, breaking dormancy, starting to put on some leaves. Not too far from that, there is a pomegranate shrub that had a little early frost damage, but is slowly coming back. And then we got more shrubs and trees down the way here on this paddy. The understory species is thornless and thorny variety blackberries all fruiting and flowering at different times. This is a Chickasaw plum. Here's another wild Chickasaw plum, both from here, state of South Carolina. We found them out in the woods and brought them out here. We brought them here because they had a good fruit on them. Here are some of the flowers. So it has flowered this year. I do expect us to produce some fruit. So not only do we let the thorn less variety blackberries grow, I'm trying to make these the dominant underspory species. I also let the thorny upright blackberries grow. And believe it or not, in my experience, these tend to produce a lot. So you're starting to see all the little white buds on all these thorny caned variety blackberries. Once again, these are wild. They're native to South Carolina, and they seem to really like the poor conditions we have here. They can handle the heat, they can handle the drought, and it doesn't affect the fruit set or the fruit taste. So all these thorny variety blackberries are going to provide quite a bit for us. The overstory species here is elderberry. We have an elderberry hedge growing up with all those blackberries underneath it. Same thing on the downhill swale here. We have an elderberry hedge with a bunch of blackberries underneath it. 
and then this swale kind of meanders down a key line on this hill. Here's another Swamp Mayhaw, and let me just walk up to the next Swale Mound, Swale Paddy. Okay, so here I am, next Swale Mound. Here's the Swale Paddies. The contour lines start to get a little further apart. We have a little bit more space here at the top of the hill to grow, so we have a lot more diversity up here at the top of the hill. Let me just walk down this Swale, and same story. We have blackberries. These are wild blackberries growing everywhere. These are thorn, thorny cane variety. Still, we have clover growing everywhere. We do have some of the thorny uh, trailing blackberries. These are the dewberries that people typically call. So a lot of different variety out here, once again, and we do let a lot of the wild stuff grow. Now let me turn around here and focus on you for y'all. Okay, here we go. Next swale paddy up. And this swale paddy kind of meanders down the side of this hillside for uh, a good 300 feet. So there's a lot of trees growing on this one swale paddy as the contour lines go around the hill. So we have jujube starting to break dormancy. Not too far from that is another jujube. The major varieties we planted are Lee and Lang jujube. We will be planting more this year. This jujube happens to have some goji berry under it. Nice little shrub species right at the base of it. Okay. Uh, pineapple guava shrubs starting to shrub out and multiply get bigger another pomegranate right here breaking dormancy okay now we're starting to get a cherry tree even more diversity and this is the first year that this cherry tree flowered for us so i'm curious to see what kind of fruit set it produces further on down the hill down this swale more goji berry. You're gonna see a bunch of sticks. These sticks in the ground are actually elderberry and they are on the swale mounds. They will propagate, believe it or not. This is a pecan. Pecan tree, very slowly breaking dormancy. You can start to see some buds there. So this pecan tree will wake up and get larger. It'll be one of the dominant trees here. It'll probably get about 90 feet tall. So right now it doesn't look like it, but it's gonna shade out a good area here and doesn't have a whole lot of life around it. Now there are a few more pomegranate, uh, pineapple guava here, not too far. And then once again, blackberries growing through it are the dominant understory shrub. So I'm still walking down that same patty. We're about to hit some more diversity. We've got persimmon, another persimmon here. We have Fuyu persimmons and then a native variety, the American persimmons. We have both Japanese and American persimmons out here. Same story with the blackberry canes. These are the upright canes. They're slow to flower, so all the white, all the uh, wild blackberries are going to flower first and fruit, and then we'll get a fruit set out of the caned varieties. A lot of these blackberries are growing through a mulberry here, which is producing. And I'm pretty sure this is a black mulberry producing. Look at that. And there are mulberries all over this thing. In fact, all of the mulberries on site are producing. On the downhill slide here, we have another smaller mulberry, younger, coming back to life. Elderberry. Oh yeah, you hear that wildness out there? It's crazy. But it's nice and peaceful here. Here's a plum tree. People are dying, but life goes on. You'll see me out here when they shut everything down. All in one almond. <laughs> There's so much food. Really, you know what, garden fans? Let me just show you some of the mulberries and we're gonna call this video done. So here's another mulberry tree putting on quite a bit of mulberries. All the mulberries this year are putting on. And that's pretty much what it sounds like out here the last uh, week and a half. That's pretty much what it sounded like out here. Um, backing up here. Lots of sirens. Mound. Lots of elderberry on the mound. Once again, I'm trying to use elderberry to solidify some of the swales into the property. We have another pecan tree here. Already broke dormancy. Starting to leaf out. Here. This is one of the Pakistani mulberries. 
putting on a huge amount of fruit and that fruit set is very large. I mean, each of those is long fingerlings of mulberries that are gonna fill out and fruit out and be really thick and big. So we got a couple different varieties of mulberries out here. It helps things do flower and fruit at very different times. Here's another plum tree, Ozark plum. Chinese chestnut tree about to break dormancy here. In fact, it has this week. Within the last week, it's starting to put on some leaf. So things are waking up out here, garden fans. Spring is here. Things are fruiting. Things are flowering. We've got life on the understory, in the midstory. We got ground covers coming back to life. And if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate every one of you watching this video. There is a better way to live. Hopefully through all of this chaos and tragedy, we can find a better, more peaceful way to live and coexist with this earth. Um, gardening, growing like this, I always know there's gonna be food. I am not scared right now whatsoever. Fear is not an option when you grow like this and live like this. This is, permaculture is not just a design science, it's a way of life and it's a state of mind. So I hope I can convey some of that to you uh, each and every video that we do. Appreciate you all for watching. God bless.